It's Monday, April 21st, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. Several unidentified gunmen critically injured a prominent TV journalist when they sprayed his moving car with bullets in Karachi. Hamid Mir, an anchor for GEO TV, was shot three times and is being treated in a local hospital where he is expected to survive. Mir's family said that he had received threats from the Pakistani intelligence services because of his political views, and the Committee to Protect Journalists criticized Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif for not doing more to prevent attacks on reporters. Mir is one of the few journalists to have interviewed Osama bin Laden, and the Taliban tried to kill him with a bomb in 2012 for his coverage of the shooting of Malala Yousafzai. At least three people are dead after gunmen opened fire on a checkpoint manned by pro-Russia militants in eastern Ukraine. No one has claimed responsibility for the attack so far, though the Russian foreign minister blames the Ukrainian government for what he says is their, quote, unwillingness to rein in and disarm the nationalists and extremists. The shooting occurred near the eastern city of Slavyansk, three days after officials from Ukraine, Russia, the U.S., and Europe reached an agreement in Geneva on disarming illegal militias. But even just hours after the agreement was reached, pro-Russia militias announced they wouldn't immediately give up their weapons, saying that the Kiev government should focus first on controlling nationalist groups who they blame for recent escalations. Following the incident, the new mayor of Slovyansk imposed a curfew and asked Russian President Vladimir Putin to send a peacekeeping force. Two drone strikes in the last two days have killed more than 20 suspected al-Qaeda militants and several civilians in southern Yemen. The nature of the attack remains murky, though CNN reported that a Yemeni official says the attack was part of a joint U.S.-Yemen operation targeting al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. The U.S. doesn't generally comment on specific drone strikes. A video released last week depicts al-Qaeda leaders and hundreds of militants at a meeting, supposedly in the same part of Yemen where the drone strikes took place. A father and son team in the Gaza Strip have figured out a way to turn reclaimed plastic into valuable fuel. Ibrahim and Mahmoud Sabo's makeshift device melts shredded plastic into liquid and gaseous components that are then collected and distilled into biodiesel. For years, the Gaza Strip has suffered under an Israeli-imposed siege that prevents weapons, along with essential goods like fuel, food, and clothing, from reaching the 1.8 million people who live there. The situation has been exacerbated in recent months when the Egyptian government destroyed several tunnels once used to smuggle much-needed fuel into Gaza. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. That's the head of the counterterrorism operation. He's here outside the base. I don't know how the hell he got here, but he's about to be torn apart by the crowd. He's trying to get the Ukrainians inside the fence to let him inside. They're afraid that if they open the door, the crowd will get through too. So it's a standoff. And he's saying he won't climb over the fence to get in, which is what they're asking him to do, because he's a general.